It is actually quite an interesting phenomenon that the general public is uh, so much excited about quantum physics. Uh, this comes, I think, from the fact that quantum physics uh, tells us that some of our everyday way how to look at the world are wrong. What is wrong is the assumption uh, that, for example, every object has to be at a definite place at any time. This is not true anymore. Some people say that a particle can be at two places at the same time, which again is not good language. Uh, the good language is that there are situations where it is completely undefined where the particle is, and it's not even us who do not know, but the art particle itself also does not know, so to speak. So this is an objective uh, non-existence of a feature of reality. And that is new in, in quantum physics, that does not not exist in what we call classical physics, the physics before quantum physics. It is also not true in relativity theory, by the way. There we also have a well-defined space, well-defined time, well-defined locations, and this kind of, of objects. This is one thing. The second point is that we, in our everyday view of the world, or in classical uh, thinking, we always believe that for whatever happens, there is a cause. There's an individual cause for individual events. Like when a stone hits me on the head, I know somebody has thrown it at me or something like that. Now in quantum physics, we have learned that this uh, causal structure, as we call it, uh, exists on the level of large ensembles but not always in the case of individual events. Like for a radioactive atom, it is defined how many atoms will decay within, say, the next minutes, but it is absolutely undefined and there is no causal explanation why a specific atom decays now. So this is another interesting uh, message from quantum mechanics, is the limit of, 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 uh, uh, of caus causality in very specific situations. But I should say that many public presentations or discussions make the mistake that they abandon these ideas in general. This is not true. One has to be very cautious when, when this happens. The third point which, is, which I would like to convey is that we can have a situation where two uh, systems separated by a large distance are connected in a, in a very new way. This is called uh, entanglement, entretrication in, in French. It simply means that if I have two particles which collide, interact with each other, and they fly apart. If you just imagine like billiard balls, two billiard balls fly opposite. Uh, two quantum billiard balls would also fly opposite, but it would be undefined in which direction they fly. They fly in all these directions at the same time. But when I make one measurement, I observe uh, this uh, particle, for example, here, and then the other one, at that moment, uh, changes its state from being uh, possibly everywhere, only being at this place. And it is wrong to assume that I just reveal uh, where they were before, and I did not just know it. No, the particles themselves also did not know. There was no well-defined feature. So to me, these are the general uh, uh, properties of quantum mechanics. Uh, in, in a more technical language, this is related to superposition, to the, to, the, to the fact superposition means that the various possibilities are superposed in, in, a, in a new kind of way this description, which we call the, the quantum state. Superposition of the quantum state is, is the general feature in that uh, situation.
And I should also mention that uh, in my personal conviction, uh, these phenomena are not limited to small systems. So far they are, but this in my eyes is, is a technical issue. And I hope that future bright young people will have the possibility to observe such phenomena also for very big ob objects. But when we talk about what can be taught at schools, I always tell my, my uh, colleagues who work in schools, because I teach for them also, the most important message which everybody should take home, also those who will not become scientists, is an understanding how big the big or how good is an understanding how good the description of nature already is. How precise we can calculate things. It is not just a way of talking about nature. Like when you step into an airplane, you trust on the Bernoulli law within less than 1% of validity. It is really fantastic how precise uh, all this is and is applied. Or when you turn on your iPhone, you, you use a lot of, of technology, but to an unbelievable precision. Some of the devices work only because a certain atom has this kind of features and another atom has another kind of features. Particularly, for example, rare earth atoms. They have been used in some modern technology. So this is the most important message, that science provides a, a mathematical understanding of the world. And in that sense, I believe that quantum physics should also be taught. Uh, quantum physics certainly cannot be taught using all the uh, formalism and all the equations, but it can be taught in the school on a phenomenological level. You just tell, tell them, you know, here are radioactive atoms, they could decay, decay or not, or, or and all these kind of things. And I have been giving lectures to, to uh, children even, you know, six, seven year, years old, and they understand the concepts if you tell them the right way. It was quite fascinating. And the questions are, are really challenging. They're very good challenge. Uh, they're very good ideas. Uh, I think this is important because, because it could very well be, I, actually I personally find it unlikely that there would not be a deeper theory as the next step. History has always progressed in steps. And if there is a deeper theory as a next step, then we probably have to change some of our fundamental ways of looking at things. And that has to start early. So children should learn very early what the fact is. Well, quantum mechanics provides a fantastically precise uh, description of many phenomena. Uh, like, for example, the laser is described by quantum mechanics. Uh, all of chemistry is uh, described by uh, the Schrödinger equation, which is an equation of quantum mechanics, and so on. It's fantastically precise. The issue is the interpretation. The issue is what does it mean for our view of the world? And uh, we see a very interesting phenomenon, namely that there are different schools of interpretation where everyone is convinced that his or her interpretation is the correct one. He thinks that the other ones are completely wrong and there are even sometimes emotional fights. Now, what does that mean? It means probably that we have not uh, found the final way to look at it yet. It probably means that this is some, some key of viewing at the world uh, uh, is missing and and uh, so therefore my personal opinion is that we that uh, we sh uh, we should look at this uh, discussion of different interpretation as a fruit fruitful uh, uh, discussion which at some level might lead to something new 
but it will lead to something new if it leaves the, the philosophical level and leads to consequences which then can be either seen in the, in the experiment or they lead to a deeper new view which opens up new directions for, for, for science. Uh, we have seen a very interesting phenomenon in the last 20 years. And that is, uh, there were people who started uh, experiments on fundamental phenomena in quantum physics uh, uh, at a time when these experiments were only uh, motivated by curiosity, even philosophical considerations because the predictions of quantum mechanics are counterintuitive. They are mathematically precise, but counterintuitive. So these experiments were started, they confirmed quantum mechanics, so you could say, why did we do these experiments? Well, there was interesting consequences, because they suddenly opened up the mind of people to the question, what could we do with it? And there's a big difference between knowing something from the book or having it realized in the laboratory in real experiments. And this having things, I, I saw that myself, like, like, like uh, you know, when we did, when we did the, the uh, experiments on two-slit diffraction of neutrons 30 years ago, this kind of experiment, uh, it was clear what came out. But after talks, even famous physicists came and said, it really works that way? Isn't that interesting? And that opens up the mind of people for the next step, and for the next step, after the next step, and so on. So we are at the, at the level now where we have, coming out of these fundamental experiments, where we have development of many new techniques, which uh, I'm really convinced, which leads to a new technology, uh, quantum information technology, new computers. I'm, I, I'm convinced that we will have this because there's no fundamental reason which tells us that this is not uh, possible. Uh, it is a big challenge, but that's a different story, but it will be done. On the other hand, it also has sharpened our intuition of what is really interesting in quantum mechanics and what are really the foundations. And there is a new school now, uh, young people in theory who work on, on what is called the reconstruction of quantum mechanics. Uh, from which are the basic principles from which we can derive this modern theory. And there is real progress. So there's really hope that we, we can put quantum physics now on a more solid conceptual level which I am convinced will open us again up for going further. If we look at the status of science today, it is one of the most successful things which mankind ever did. It's fantastic, it's completely changed our lives it cha in an immediate way, like many of us would not be alive anymore without without the progress of science in medicine and so on and so on. So this is quite clear. The question is, where do we stand? And I, pers I personally be believe that most of the future is ahead of us. If you just consider the history, modern science starts with Galilei or with uh, with uh, uh, Newton, people like that. So it's not more than 300 to 400 years old, which is nothing on the scale of the history of humanity. So I find it very unlikely that we have found most of it. So uh, if somebody, for example, believes, it happens, some people believe that uh, we uh, we are close to a theory of everything, then my reaction is probably we should have more fantasy, you know, for, for many possibilities. And if you ask about open questions, there are many open questions. Like a, a famous example is, 
is the unification of the two you know, best theories which we have in terms of also conceptually deep. And that is general relativity theory and quantum mechanics. And these still stand separately. Uh, uh, why is this an issue? Because there are actually some conflicts between the two theories. Like uh, uh, relativity theory, we have space and time well defined. But in quantum mechanics, we learn that the sources of space, space uh, masses can be in a superposition of being at different places, which means that space cannot be well defined at some level. And uh, the fact that some of the brightest minds in physics have been working on this issue for 80 years now at least and have not found a solution means that the solution will be extremely deep. It will be extremely significant if somebody finds it and it will probably in a direction where nobody expects, expects it. That has happened before in science. So this is one of the inter and, uh, interesting challenges. And I think that, that basically, like, like Einstein, Einstein was not known when he did his things. Any young physicist can make a contribution here. I'm really convinced of that. If he or she adapts the right background, the right training. Right? This, is, this is one, one uh, case. The other one are these questions of, of dark energy and dark matter. Uh, I would not be surprised if we don't find them in the in, in the usual way, you know, dark matter and the reason for dark energy or whatever. They might they have the potential. They smell a little bit like like dark energy, dark matter. Smell a little bit like like the ether in the in the old electrodynamic theory. I might be wrong, but it could be it could be the case. Again, if that is true. We need a new way to look at, at the world, and not just small modifications of gravity theory. It must be something. It must be something deeper. Deeper. And in quantum mechanics, we have this this challenge of what some people call the measurement paradox. The fact that upon observation, uh, <coughs> the quantum state, which has all these possibilities, changes, and we have one specific uh, measurement result. Uh, I belong to those people who think that this is outside uh, physics. It cannot be described in physics because uh, physics is a is a theory which has a has a uh, unitary time evolution. But uh, I feel the chances that this tells us something about the role of of the of the of observation in the world. And the role of of of, of uh, information. Maybe there are situations where we have to reconsider uh, the Cartesian cut, the Cartesian cut between res cogitans and res extensa, bet between the the observer and the observed. Maybe there is something which we don't understand yet. Uh, I but I would like to add a po point which is very important for me. When one talks about these things, people very often get associations with strange esoteric ideas and so on. You know, everything is the wholeness of everything. I don't believe in that. I, I, what I'm talking about are specific scientific questions, which can be answered, I hope, by scientific investigation by future generations. And I hope that I'm still alive and somebody has a really good new insight.